Hello. We have three stories today of petty revenge where small and often humorous acts of retaliation call home. Our first story hits big on the entitlement scale when one parking lot Karen decides one handicap stall just isn't enough. As always, your support helps fight the Reddit bot menace. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We start with story one. Park illegally in a disabled space? Learn a very expensive lesson. I have a disabled parking placard, and a few weeks ago, I went to Target to buy things I didn't need and forget the things I did. Not only were all the spaces taken, someone parked their gigantic Escalade on the line between two disabled spaces, taking up both. Wholly irritated, because this happens so much, I walked around the car. No placard or disabled plate. Cue the fury of someone who has to deal with this stuff all the time, and cue petty revenge. I took a pic and went inside to find a manager. When I found one, I showed her the photo and she rolled her eyes and sighed. Apparently, this happens a lot at their location because it's near an affluent town with a lot of very wealthy, very entitled people. And most often, it's the owners of huge SUVs and F-150s that park like jerks. She said she'd call the cops, so I decided to go back outside and hang out by the doors to watch the show. The manager joined me and we chatted while we waited for the police. The cops arrived and walked around the car, peering through the windows and running the plate. The cop took out a little book and started writing in it. They took some photos and one came over and asked if they'd make an announcement in the store to get the driver outside. The manager radioed someone inside and asked them to announce the make and model and plate of the car over the PA system. A few minutes later, she came charging out of the store, middle-aged, well-dressed woman, the common Karen of North America, and already yelling at the police. As soon as she got to her car, one of the cops held up his hand to shut her up and started lecturing her. I was too far away to hear, but she stopped yelling at least. That cop spoke to her for a few minutes, and then the other cop with the little book handed her but two papers. She looked absolutely apoplectic. The cops came back over and spoke to the manager, telling her they ordered her to move her car and if she didn't, or caused problems in the store, to call them back and they tow the car. They told us they gave her two tickets for each space at $500 each. Ouch! The manager thanked the police and me and went back inside. The woman stomped around a bit before getting in her car and peeling out. The cops looked at each other, then got in their cars and followed her. Pretty sure she continued to have the day she deserved. Meanwhile, I happily treated myself to some Legos for performing a public service. In the comments, A.A. Gifford said, Awesome! Peeling out got her an exhibition of speed and pulled her license, I bet. OP replied, Mwahahaha. Jones and for the Jonesy said, Nice to see someone get caught. OP replied, Right? I'm so tired of these people getting away with this stuff. There has to be consequences for this stuff or they'll just keep doing it, thinking they're untouchable. Green Radioactive said, Good for you. I once parked in a disabled space in a deserted service station. A disabled person showed up. I never felt so tiny in my life. People who park in disabled spots are scum. OP replied, Sometimes that happens, especially if the spot hasn't been repainted in years or the sign isn't easily visible. The key thing is you felt bad about it. This woman was angry she got caught. Big difference. Teamwork makes the dream work. This Karen was all like, I'll park wherever I want in my fancy SUV. And this team of public servants was like, okay, but it'll cost ya. Our second story tells of a young couple who couldn't figure out what was wrong with a home they bought at a steal of a price. That was until they met the neighbors. In story two, I live next to the guy that called the city on all his neighbors weekly. I bet he remembers this. My wife, 22-year-old female at the time, and I, 26-year-old male at the time, shopped for a home in 2016 before things got too crazy, and we found a small place in a working-class neighborhood. We were working on getting the property approved for the FHA loan, and in the meantime, the seller allowed us to stay there so we could start fixing up the place. It was quite the fixer-upper, but we were young, and the prospect of sweat equity was exciting. We were surprised that the house was so inexpensive, until we got to know our next-door neighbor. Devin was somewhat famous in the neighborhood for finding reasons to call the city over infractions. For example, he would go out at night and measure the distance tires were from the curb. He filled noise complaints all the time and would intimidate folks on the street with threatening letters. Most memorably, Devin would actually regularly heckle the previous black tenants of the property we were buying from, from the safety of his elevated backyard. It was on a bit of a hill. What made the property that we were buying difficult to qualify for the FHA loan was that the detached garage in the backyard had a sloping roof. 
The structure was at least 70 years old and was in disrepair. The seller paid to have it torn down. However, this only revealed that one of the walls of the structure was the retaining wall for a huge section of Devon's backyard. The eight-foot retaining wall was in bad shape. It leaned in towards my side by nearly 18 inches at the top from the bottom. It looked like it wouldn't take much to fall over and presented itself as a hazard. With permission from the seller, I tore down the retaining wall with the intent of replacing it myself at my own cost. This opened us up to a barrage of creepy, threatening, cryptic letters from Devin. He was going to sue. We had to have an engineer approve of everything, etc., etc. He called the city almost every day. He insisted that we pay for everything despite the fact that it was the roots on his side that were pushing into my property. The code enforcement worker privately agreed with my assessment but seemed cowed by Devin's daily calls. Anyway, I decided that I was done dealing with Devin. It was too stressful. I didn't even own the place. I was the buyer and the loan wouldn't get approved anyway due to the issue. Neither the seller nor Devin were willing to pay for a new wall and I knew that anything I built wouldn't be good enough for Devin anyway. Before my wife and I gave up and moved out, I hacked a bit at the roots that were the last thing holding Devin's yard in from falling eight feet down. They were overhanging my side of the property, after all. So I would have had to cut them down before building a replacement retaining wall. My guess is that Devin ended up losing about a fourth of his backyard and his fence over the next couple of months to erosion. Edit. We were 26 and 22 at the time, not now. In the comments, a small story got all the attention. Techno said, an acquaintance of mine, Tom, had a Devon very briefly. Tom knew full well why the house was going cheap. The cousin he bought it from told him, up front, about the prison guard neighbor that had frightened away three sets of tenants by threatening them over everything from trash cans to having pets. So the very first weekend after closing, Tom throws a backyard barbecue for his friends. It's loud and crowded and everyone's having a fantastic time. Devon comes home from work mid-party and immediately tries to start trouble. He screams out his window and throws stuff over the fence. When the stuff is thrown back and the music turned up, Devin tries a call to the police, telling them, and I quote, there's a bunch of druggies fighting next door. Cops showed, cops ate some hot dogs, cops left. After the next two calls to police went nowhere and the party was still being terrific, we'd set up lawn darts and bocce. Devin put his uniform back on, grabbed a pistol, and wandered over to take care of it himself the way that had always worked, by threatening people. He stomps into the backyard, waving his gun around and gives the biggest, closest guy a shove. Devin says, This party is over. Everyone needs to get their belongings and leave now. I don't think I heard the end of the word now actually come out of the man's mouth. Just a crunch and screaming because the county deputy Devin had shoved now had him pinned on the ground with a broken arm. See, Tom worked for the city prosecutor's office two towns over. His friends were lawyers, cops, and folks from City Hall. Once Devin went into the back of an ambulance, he didn't return. Went to jail, didn't get bond, and his landlord evicted him while he was waiting for trial. Yeah, dummy wanted a trial because he'd done nothing wrong. Ended up serving time for two felonies. It's not often people would be thankful a loan didn't go through, but this would definitely be one of them. I mean, that decrepit structure in the backyard saved OP and his wife from what would have been a nightmarish situation. But the story in the comments definitely takes the cake for the justice tingles. Our third story starts with a friendship that took a nosedive and one old friend who clearly needed a reality check. Story three. If you try to mess with me, my partner will mess with you. About a year ago, I had a rather acrimonious falling out with a friend. We were not super close friends, but had known each other a long time. In my mind, this friend had a history of mild to light substance abuse, and this landed him in hot water multiple times in the past. For example, job loss, nasty breakups. But as a person on a purely interpersonal level, he was mostly fun to hang out with from time to time. A lively and fun guy. Because his occasional problems decided to reappear, we had a big falling out which started with his rather poor treatment of his ex-girlfriend. She is also a friend of mine. His stories about what happened and why were all extremely convoluted. Equals a lie. In the end, his story was rather untruthful demonstrably so, and his behavior in the two months before was also rather concerning. So with all that, I set out to talk to him about life, where he was combative, and it ended in a swearing match and the end of any remaining friendship. Mutual friends were initially split on all of this, but as the months went by, mostly everyone also turned their back to him. The whole time he maintained that I performed a character assassination, I didn't, and was very vocal about this and very vocal about dissing me to friends and everyone. It never bothered me. 
I figured people would eventually figure out the truth of his personality, which it turns out they did. The other night I saw him in a local restaurant with a much younger woman and clearly on a date. I asked the restaurant owner, a friend, and was told it's his new girlfriend. She doesn't live in town but rather farther away and travels in to see him. Time for some revenge. There was a football soccer game on and the place was quite crowded. He likes soccer and his lady also seemed interested. My partner asked me if that person was he who shall not be named and I confirmed that it was. I must point out that we were sat off in one corner and he hadn't seen us. As the game was almost over, my partner excused herself and walked to the bar and asked to pay the bill for my ex-friend's table. The waitress said that would be no problem and asked who she should say paid the bill. My partner told him, I'm his wife, and came back to our table and told me what she had done. When the game was over, he asked the waitress for the bill who promptly told him his wife had paid it. His new lady friend was instantly visibly upset. A short, heated conversation took place. She slapped him and left the restaurant in a hurry. Glorious. Edit. He is still using drugs. He has two DUIs and now a suspended license, yet still drives. He is, was seeing someone else on the side too, apparently. So for those saying he is rebuilding his life, wrong. He is still talking smack about all his old friends, although now nobody listens. In the comments, Funny Sheep said, There is a name for people who are fun and charming, but also have a nasty habit of lying and treating people badly. Clown face emoji. Just Aoli replied, Politicians? HMS Lardabart Fast said, From his previous behavior, you may have just saved that young lady from a horrible future. More important, as this is petty revenge, well done. Flat Pudding added, this ain't it, chief. He may be a bad person, but revenge shouldn't come in the form of a lie. I think revenge was warranted, but this method also tells me a lot about your partner. I believe she was in the wrong here, at least in my perspective. Devers replied, yeah, this is messed up. OP tells everyone they didn't character assassinate someone, then proceeds to character assassinate someone. Ha <laughs> ha, lol. OP's ex-friend sounds more like a Bartimus Crouch Jr. than he does a Voldemort. Just saying. And have to agree that OP is the cauldron calling the kettle black. <laughs> Sorry. The he who shall not be named reference just drew it out of me. And that's it for today. Until next time. Shine bright, Starlight. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.